this is how the units are built. So we talk about how energy, how chemistry sort of powers our lives. And we go through sort of fuels, then we go through electrochemistry, then rates and equilibria. Now what's really interesting about this is electrochemistry is sort of broken up into two. You find the basics are with the fuels and then the advanced electrolysis is with rates and equilibria. So you sort of, it's sort of a bit frustrating to learn because you do, you know, you do your fuels and then you go and do a little bit of redox and then you sort of forget it. And you go, all right, now I'm going into rates and equilibria I want. I keep continuing on with redox. It's a bit of a weird way they do it, but they just do. So it kind of cuts. You then do rates and equilibria and then you come back and do a bit more of electrolysis. And that's how those two area studies sort of fit in together. Then we have unit four. Um, so unit four is how chemistry explains life. And we have experimental design, organic chem, and analytical chem. So this used to be experimental design, organic chem with analytical chem, and then food chemistry. Now what they've done is they've split those two up. And that is essentially how the units run. Now, experimental design is really interesting. As much as it's part of unit four, it can come up wherever. Um, it's another one of those topics that is very broad ranging, much like green chemistry. It can come up absolutely anywhere. And essentially what happens with it is you will do a poster or you do like a practical report, but usually it's done as a poster and you'll be expected to do an experiment on one of these topics and then apply experimental to do experimental design concepts to it. Um, and then I just quickly wanted, to, quickly wanted to point out, because I know there'll be a vast proportion of you that will receive notes from an older sibling or a friend in the year level above, or um, you might go and have some tutoring and you get given some notes that are not relevant to the new area of study, they're, 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 they're the old study design. Now, what's really important is those notes will still be useful. As much as I want you to do your own notes, they are still useful and don't throw them out. What you need to know are what are the changes. So unit three area study one changes. So it is being removed. What is being removed is the emphasis on crude oil. You'll find that in the older exams and the older study guides and so forth, there's a massive emphasis on crude oil. Um, even if you don't know what that is, don't worry. But crude oil is sort of the raw component of just like petrodiesel. Crude oil, you still need to know about it. You still need to know little bits of detail about it. We're actually not even gonna talk about it today. Um, it's more of a smaller subtopic, but it used to be a really big topic. You used to have to know heaps about it. You don't anymore. Um, and then they've removed the emphasis on the comparison of cells. So what you'll find is if you read the old, and I don't want you to, but I've done it for you. When you when you read the old errors, the, the old study design, you find that there was there was about four dot points in a, row, in a row that were like the comparison of this cell with this cell, the comparison of this cell with this cell, the comparison of that with that, the comparison of that with that. Those have all just been removed. Now, it doesn't mean comparison questions are being removed. There will be comparison questions. They love them. They love a comparison question. But the idea is that the emphasis on, comparison, on the comparison of cells has been removed. Um, and then what has been added or altered. Um, so fuel sources or PF of the body have been pulled from unit four area study two. So this is a little bit of that food chem that's been uh, sifted through. As you can see, it's one of our subtopics today. We will discuss it. It will only be about 10 minutes, but we will discuss it. Um, and then, oh, whoops, cellular respiration and photosynthesis has been added. This is brand new. This is our natural cycle. Um, it sort of builds on from that sort of fuel sources um, of the body. So looking at the cellular respiration and photosynthesis sort of cycle. Um, and then we have the green chemistry uh, application that comes with it. So then my next point is you're at the start of the year. You've just done unit one, two. You've probably done an exam. Yeah, you've been on holidays and you've probably been like, I don't really care about, you know, chemistry anymore. That is fair enough. If you don't care about chemistry anymore, completely reasonable. Um, once you move into chemistry three, four, you'll be like, all right, now I care about it again. When you do, this is what you need to know. This is what is helpful to know from unit one, two. So need to know is super important. It's like a must. You must remember this stuff. So you must remember the concept of the mole and then sort of the writing and balancing of chemical equations around that. And then the stoichiometry calculations. So the mole is really important as much as you might say, well, I know what a mole is. It's, you know, 6.02 by 10 to the 23 molecules. 
Sure, that's not really all, all that useful. I'm more talking about working with moles. So having the ability to manipulate moles within an equation um, and then writing that out, having the ability to work with it with stoichiometry. So using your moles equals mass over molar mass, using your concentration calculation, so moles equals C by V, um, looking at those sort of calculations that you would need to work with. Um, also sort of in the gaseous form, we will talk about it again today, but the universal gas equation does come up again in year 12. It's a big content, it's a good aspect of it. Big aspect of, big aspect of it. And then working with concentrations, and this is particularly important for things like titrations. I'm sure you did titrations last year, and I'm sure you heard all the memes. Titrations are all of chemistry. Yes, they are. You do need to know your titrations. They do come up and they are a vast and pretty strong aspect. Um, HPLC does come up and the annoying thing about HPLC is a lot of schools ignore teaching it. Um, they sort of expect you to remember it because it's smallish, but it will be worth one or two marks on the exam. So do remember your HPLC. And then for all of you, which is new, in unit one, two, you learned some green chemistry. Those concepts still apply. Please remember that green, those green chemistry concepts. Then we have our inter versus intramolecular bonds. Um, these, the super, super detail about them is not that useful. You really just want to know the strengths. When, when are they present and the strengths. Um, redox basics. Um, although you do completely cover this again, it's important to sort of have that understanding of it because you'll probably go through it a lot quicker. Same with organic basics, so organic chemistry. Again, you're going to cover it all again. But it's also like if you know know it already, it'll be a lot easier. And then acid-base reactions, and although they don't commonly come up, the idea behind them is useful, particularly in things like titrations. And then how is chemistry assessed? This is something that you should all know at the start of the year. Um, so you start off with unit three with 16%, unit four with 24% because they are bigger. The exams are 60%. The exam is worth the majority of the year. It's big. It's difficult. You need to make sure that you... Um, are ready for it. So it is a long way away. I don't want you to stress about it, but just to go through some points about it, it's 120 marks. Um, it's 120 marks in 150 minutes. 150 marks, I should say 150 minutes. Oops, my bad. Um, so it's 120 marks in 150 minutes, but it has a 15 minute reading time as well. So I would argue that it's not just 150 minutes, it's 165 minutes. Right, now let me get rid of my pen. Why not let me get rid of my pen? All right, I'll work with the pen now. Um, there are 30 multiple choice. Uh, there are 90 short answer um, marks. This is usually over eight to 12 questions. So there's 30 multiple choice questions. There's not 90 short answer questions. There is 90 marks. This is usually over eight to 12 questions. Now when I say eight to 12 questions, that's like a question that has sub parts. So it'll be like question one, and then it'll have like four parts to it. So there'll be four questions within it. Um, uh, and then also really important, the exam is difficult, but it's also really fair. And I think that's something you know, I want you to get your head around. Lots of students go into the chemistry exam thinking, oh, this is just gonna be really hard. And they've made it hard because they're just, they're not being nice. That's not true. The exam is actually reasonably fair. The exam is difficult, but it is fair. Um, there's a large variation of questions. There are some very straightforward basic recall questions, but then there are some far more complex interpretation-based questions. They need to split you up. They need to get the 50 student from the 25 student. They need to split you up. That's how they do it. They have easier questions. They have more difficult. It's a very fair exam. I think chemistry does it really well. Um, and although the questions are mostly segregated into their sort of topics, they do over overlap at times. There are There is a distinct overlap in some questions. So it's important to practice integrating your topics together, not just doing one at a time. 